This is going to be a brief introduction to uh, using FilterStorm on iPhone. Uh, this introduction won't go over layers, there's a separate video for that, but I'll just go over the basic interface and some editing. So let's begin by loading a photo. Um, so quickly, these <clears throat> buttons down the side are load or close photo, uh, we have canvas tools, cropping, uh, cropping, rotating, straightening, adding borders, things like that. The filters, this is things like blurring, brightness contrast, uh, black and white. Our layers, um, just to note, it's off, they're off by default, it makes things a bit faster, but you get more control if you turn them on. Uh, automations, these are uh, saved sets of edits that you can uh, apply to photos. Um, the info button, you can add tags here, and in the about screen there's a link to download more automations. Of course you can also make your own. Um, it's the history and export. So first let's go through cropping. Um, you basically pinch and swipe the image to get the part you want into the rectangle, then hit the check button and it'll crop to that. Or you can slide around the lines to change the uh, ratio of the box and you can also use uh, preset ratios here. I'm just going to cancel that. You can also rotate flip, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can straighten your image, it gives you some nice lines to go by. And you can add some borders. Change the border color, for example. Something like that. Let's go into our filters. Um, so, let's just start with brightness contrast. You can just slide along. You can actually grab the slider from anywhere on it and move your finger up and down. You don't have to touch the ball. The ball. Uh, and you can tap these to change the mode, so contrast and brightness. And you can use this button to switch uh, the preview to be left hand, right hand, or the whole image. It's going to cancel that for now. That's how most of the items in the filters menu work. Uh, you can also use this switch down here to change which side the sliders appear on, so you can have it on the left or the right. I guess we'll keep it on the right so my hand doesn't block. Um, so most of these work that way. You have saturation here and color balance controls. Um, blur controls, things like that. Anyway, I'll go into my curves. Uh, if you don't know how curves work, there is a text uh, explanation on the help portion of the website. Um, so I'm just going to set the curves to make the sky more dramatic. Now if I were to hit this check button and apply this, it would make the image look like this preview, um, but then we'd lose all the detail on the buildings, you can see they're just black here, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit the brush icon here to enter masking mode. So this will let me uh, use a brush for example. I just take my finger and drag, oops, let me hold the phone, and I can just drag it to apply. I can use an eraser if I want to erase. I can also uh, use a gradient. Plan a gradient, I'm going to cancel that. Uh, this is a color range, it selects the color of what's under the loop and uh, applies it to everything that's the same color. Simple opacity, or on a vignette. But I just wanted to brush that. Uh, Now I'm going to uh, do the same thing again. <coughs> uh, 
uh, sort of going to set the curves for the water. And I'm going to apply, and this time I'm just going to use a gradient. Then one more time, I'm going to do this, oops, apply that. Uh, set the curves, but this time for the buildings. Close for this. Close, a bit too close. Let's just be a bit rougher on that, so it doesn't take quite so much time. Okay, so now the buildings look much nicer, and we have a much improved exposure. I can also make changes, like, uh, for example, I could make the sky a bit more colorful for the sunset, like this. Um, I, I can do similar things for the water. And when I'm done, I just go to export here, uh, check where I want to send it, send to the photo library, and hit the export button to send. We can change uh, settings, the maximum uh, export size. It should be, if you have an iPhone for us, 8.5 megapixels by default, so it'll be big enough to have the native uh, phone resolution. And so the JPEG quality. And if I want to send to Flickr or FTP or Dropbox, we can set that all up here too. And you can log into your account. I'll just cancel that. And that's uh, my tutorial.